Hello, today we are reading One Friday Morning by Langston Hughes. And our main character in the story is an artiste. So I have my little beret on. The thrilling news didn't come directly to Nancy Lee, but it came in little indirections that finally added themselves up to one tremendous fact. She had won the prize, but being a calm and quiet young lady, she didn't say anything. Although the whole high school buzzed with rumors, guesses, reportedly authentic announcements on the part of the students who had no right to be making announcements at all since no student really knew yet who had won this year's art scholarship. But Nancy Lee's drawing was so good, her lines so sure, her colors so bright and harmonious that certainly no other student in the senior art class at George Washington High was thought to have much of a chance. Yet you could never tell. Last year, nobody had expected Joe Williams to win the Artist Club Scholarship with that funny modernistic watercolor he had done at the high level bridge. In fact, it was hard to make out that there was a bridge until you had looked at the picture a long time. Still, Joe Williams got the prize, was feted by the community's leading painters, club women and society folks all at a big banquet at the Park Rose Hotel and was now an award student at the art school, the city's only art school. Nancy Lee Johnson was a colored girl a few years out of the South, but seldom did her high school classmates think of her as colored. She was smart, pretty, and brown, and fitted in well with the life of the school. She stood high in scholarship, played a swell game of basketball, and had taken part in the senior musical in a soft, velvety voice and had never seemed to intrude or stand out, except in pleasant ways. So it was seldom off, uh, even mentioned her color. Nancy Lee sometimes forgot she was colored herself. She liked her classmates and her school. Particularly, she liked her art teacher, Miss Dietrich, the tall red haired woman who taught her law and order in doing things and the beauty of working step by step until a job is done, a picture finished, a design created, or a block print carved out of nothing, but an idea in a beautiful individual, unlike, oh, sorry, smooth square of linoleum, inked proofs made, and finally put down on paper, clean, sharp, beautiful individual, unlike any other in the world, thus making the paper have a meaning nobody else could give it except Nancy Lee. That was the wonderful thing about true creation. You made something nobody else on earth could make, but you. Miss Dietrich was the kind of teacher who brought out the best in her students, but her own best, not anybody else's copied best. For anybody else's best, great though it might be, even Michelangelo's wasn't enough to please Miss Dietrich, along, uh, dealing with the creative impulses of young men and women living in American city in the mid, Middle West. And being American, Nancy Lee was proud of being American with blood out of Africa a long time ago, too many generations back to count. But her parents had taught her the beauties of Africa its strength, its song, its mighty rivers, its early smelting of iron, its building of the pyramids, and its ancient and important civilizations. And Miss Dietrich had discovered for her the sharp and humorous lines of African sculpture. Benign, Congo, Makondi. Nancy Lee's father was a mail carrier, her mother a social worker in a city settlement house. Both parents had been to colleges in the South and her mother had gotten a further degree in social work from a Northern university. Her parents were like most Americans, simple, ordinary people who had worked hard and steadily for their education. Now they were trying to make it easier for Nancy Lee to achieve learning than it had been for them. They'd be very happy when they heard of the award that their daughter uh, to their daughter, yet Nancy didn't tell them. To surprise them would be better 
Besides, there had been a promise. Casually one day, Miss Dietrich asked Nancy Lee what color frame she thought would be best on her picture. That had been her first inkling. Blue, Nancy Lee said. Although the picture had been entered in the Artist Club contest a month ago, Nancy Lee did not hesitate in her choice of color for the possible frame. Since she could still see her picture clearly in her mind's eye, for that picture, waiting for the blue frame had come out of her soul, her own life, and it bloomed into miraculous being with Miss Dietrich's help. It was, she knew, the best watercolor she'd ever painted in her four years as a high school art student. And she was glad she'd made something Miss Dietrich liked well enough to permit her to enter it in the contest before she graduated. It was not a modernistic picture in the sense that you had to look at it a long time to understand it. It was just a simple scene in the city park on a spring day with the trees still leaflessly lacy against the sky, the new grass fresh and green, a flag on a tall pole in the center, children playing and an old woman sitting on a bench with her head turned. A lot for one picture to be sure, but it was not there in heavy and final detail like a calendar. Its charm was that everything was light and airy, happy like spring, with a lot of blue sky, paper white clouds, and air showing through. You could tell that the old Negro woman was looking at the flag, and that the flag was proud in the spring breeze, and that the breeze helped to make the children's dresses billow as they played. Miss Dietrich had taught Nancy Lee how to paint spring people and a breeze on what was only a white, plain piece of paper from the supply closet. But Miss Dietrich had not said, make it like any other spring people breeze ever, ever seen before. She let it remain Nancy Lee's own. That's how the old woman happened to be there looking at the flag, for in her mind, the flag, the spring, the woman formed a kind of triangle holding a dream Nancy Lee wanted to express. White stars on a blue field, spring, children, ever-growing life, and an old woman. Would the judges at the artist club like it? One wet, rainy April afternoon, Miss O'Shea, the girl's vice principal, sent for Nancy Lee to stop by her office as school closed. Pupils without umbrellas or raincoats were clustered in doorways, hoping to make it home before, uh, between showers. Outside, the skies were gray. Nancy Lee's thoughts were suddenly gray too. She didn't think she'd done anything wrong. Yet that tight little knot came in her throat, just as she, just the same as she approached Miss O'Shea's door. Perhaps she'd banged her locker too often and too hard. Perhaps the note in French she'd written to Sally halfway across study hall just for fun had never gotten to Sally, but into Miss O'Shea's hands instead. Or maybe she was failing in some subject and wouldn't be allowed to graduate. Chemistry? A pang went through the pit of her stomach. She knocked on Miss O'Shea's door. That familiarly solid and competent voice said, come in. Miss O'Shea had a way of making you feel welcome, even if you came to be expelled. Sit down, Nancy Lee Johnson, said Miss O'Shea. I have something to tell you. Nancy Lee sat down, but I must ask you to promise not to tell anyone yet. I won't, Miss O'Shea, Nancy Lee said, wondering what on earth the principal had to say to her. You are about to graduate, Miss O'Shea said, and we shall miss you. You have been an excellent student, Nancy, and you will not be without honors on the senior list, as I'm sure you know. At that point, there was a little knock on the door. Miss O'Shea called out, come in, and Miss Dietrich entered. May I be part of this too, she asked, tall and smiling. Of course, Miss O'Shea said. I was just telling Nancy Lee what we thought of her, but I hadn't gotten around to giving her the news. Perhaps, Miss Dietrich, you'd like to tell her yourself? Miss Dietrich was always direct. Nancy Lee, she said, your picture has won the Artist Club Scholarship. The slender brown girl's eyes widened. 
her heart jumped, then her throat tightened again. She tried to smile, but instead tears came to her eyes. Dear Nancy Lee, Miss O'Shea said, we're so happy for you. The elderly white woman took her hand and shook it warmly like Miss Dietrich, while Miss Dietrich beamed with pride. Nancy Lee must have danced all the way home. She never remembered quite how she got there through the rain. She hoped she'd been dignified, but certainly she hadn't stopped to tell anybody her secret on the way. Raindrops, smiles, and tears mingled on her brown cheeks. She hoped her mother hadn't gotten home and that the house was empty. She wanted to have time to calm down and look natural before she had to see anyone. She didn't want to be bursting with excitement, having a secret to contain. Miss O'Shea calling her to the office had been in the nature of a preparation and a warning. The kind elderly vice principal said she did not believe in catching young ladies unawares, even with honors, so she wished her to know about the coming award. In making acceptance speeches, she wanted her to be calm, prepared, not nervous or overcome or frightened. So Nancy Lee was asked to think what she would say when the scholarship was conferred upon her a few days hence, both at the Friday morning high school assembly hour when the announcement would be made and that evening at a banquet at the artist club. Nancy Lee promised the vice principal to think calmly about what she would say. Miss Dietrich had then asked for some facts about her parents, her background, her life, since such material would probably be desired for the papers, newspapers. Nancy Lee had told her how six years before they'd come from the deep south, her father having been successful in achieving a transfer from one post to another, a thing he had long sought in order to give Nancy a chance to go to school in the north. Now they lived in a modest Negro neighborhood went to the best plays when they came to town and had been saving to spend Na send Nancy Lee to an art school in case she were permitted to enter. But the scholarship would help a great deal for they were not rich people. Now mother can have a new coat next winter, Nancy Lee thought, because my tuition will be covered for the first year. And once in art school, there are other scholarships I can win. Dreams began to dance through her head plans and ambitions, beauty she would create for herself, her parents, and the Negro people. For Nancy Lee possessed a deep and reverent race pride. She could see the old woman in her picture, really her grandmother in the South, lifting up her head to the bright stars on the flag in the distance. A Negro in America? often hurt, discriminated against, but always there were stars on that blue body of the flag. Was there any other flag in the world that had so many stars? Nancy Lee thought deeply, but she couldn't remember any in all the encyclopedias or geographies she had ever looked into. Picture your wagon to a star, Nancy Lee thought, dancing home in the rain. Who were our flag makers? Friday morning came, the morning when the world would know, her high school world, the newspaper world, her mother and father. Dad could not be there at the assembly to hear the announcement, nor see her prize picture displayed on the stage, nor listen to Nancy Lee's little speech of acceptance, but mother would be able to come. Although mother was much puzzled as to why Nancy Lee was so insistent she'd be at school on that particular Friday morning. When something is happening, something new and fine, something that will change your very life, it's hard to go to sleep at night for thinking about it and hard to keep your heart from pounding or a strange little knot of joy from gathering in your throat. Nancy Lee had taken her bath brushed her hair until it glowed, and had gone to bed thinking about the next day, the big day, when before 3,000 students, she would be the one student honored, her painting, the one painting to be acclaimed as the best of the year from all the art classes of the city. Her short speech of gratitude was ready. She went over it in her mind, not word for word, because she simply didn't want to sound as if it had been learned by heart, but 
She let the thoughts flow simply and sincerely through her consciousness many times. When the president of the artist club presented her with the medal and scroll of the scholarship award, she would say, judges and members of the artist club, I wanna thank you for this award that means so much to me personally and through me to my, and my people, the colored people of this city who sometimes are discouraged and bewildered thinking that color and poverty are against them. I accept this award with gratitude and pride, not for myself alone, but for my race that believes in American opportunity and American fairness and the bright stars in our flag. I thank Ms. Dietrich and the teachers who made it possible for me to have the knowledge and training that lie behind this honor you have conferred upon my painting. When I came here from the South a few years ago, I was not sure how you would receive me. You received me well. You've given me a chance and helped me along the road that I wanted to follow. I suppose the judges know that every week here at assembly, the students of this school pledge allegiance to the flag. I shall try to be worthy of that pledge and of the help and friendship and understanding of my fellow citizens of whatever race or creed and of our American dream of liberty and justice for all. That would be her response before the students in the morning. How proud and happy the Negro pupils would be, perhaps almost as proud as if they were one colored star on the football team. Her mother would probably cry with happiness. Thus Nancy Lee went to sleep dreaming, a wonderful tomorrow. The bright sunlight of an April morning woke her. There was breakfast with her parents, their half amused and puzzled faces across the table, wondering what could be the secret that made her eyes so bright. The swift walk to school, the clock in the tower, almost nine, hundreds of pupils streaming into the long rambling old building that was the city's largest high school. The sudden quiet of the room, homeroom after the bell rang, then the teacher opening her record book to call the roll. But just before she began, she looked across the room until her eyes located Nancy Lee. Nancy, she said, Miss O'Shea would like to see you in her office, please. Nancy Lee rose and went out while the names were being called for the word present added its period to each name. Perhaps Nancy Lee thought the reporters from the papers had already come. Maybe they wanted to take her picture before the assembly, which wasn't until 10 o'clock. Last year, they had had the, photo the photograph of the winner of the award in the morning papers as soon as the announcements had been made. Nancy Lee knocked at Miss O'Shea's door. Come in. The vice principal stood at her desk. There was no one else in the room. Room it was very quiet. Sit down, Nancy Lee, she said. Miss O'Shea didn't smile and there was a long pause. The seconds went by slowly. I don't know how to tell you what I have to say. The elderly woman began. Her eyes were on the papers on her desk. I'm indignant and I'm ashamed for myself and for this city. Then she lifted her eyes and looked at Nancy Lee in the neat blue dress sitting there before her. You are not to receive the scholarship this morning. Outside in the hall, the electric bells announcing the first period rang loud and intermittently long. Miss O'Shea remained silent. To the brown girl there in the chair, the room grew suddenly smaller and smaller and smaller and there was no air. She couldn't speak. Miss O'Shea said, when the community learned that you were colored, they changed their plans. Still Nancy Lee said nothing, but there was no air to give breath to her lungs. Here's a letter from the committee, Nancy Lee. Miss O'Shea picked it up and read the final paragraph to her. It seems to us Wiser, it seems to us to arb, it seems to us wiser to arbitrarily rotate the award among the various high schools of the city from now on. And especially in this case, since a student chosen happens to be colored, a circumstance which unfortunately had we known might have prevented this embarrassment. 
but there have never been any Negro students in the local art school and the presence of one there might create difficulties for all concerned. We have high regard for the quality for Nancy Lee Johnson's talent, but we do not feel it would be fair to honor it with the Artist Club Award. Miss O'Shea paused, she put the letter down. Nancy Lee, I'm very sorry to have to give you this message. But my speech, Nancy Lee said, was about, what's your speech about? The word stuck in her throat, about America. Miss O'Shea had risen. She turned her back, looking out the window at the spring tulips in the schoolyard. I thought since the award would be made at the assembly right after our oath of allegiance, the words tumbled almost hysterically from Nancy Lee's throat now, I would put part of the flag salute into my speech, you know, Miss O'Shea, the part about liberty and justice for all. I know, said Miss O'Shea, slowly facing the room again. But America is only what we who believe in it make it. I'm Irish. You may not know Nancy Lee, but years ago we were called the dirty Irish and mobs rioted against us in big cities. And we were invited to go back to where we'd come from. But we didn't go and we didn't give up because we believed in the American dream and in our power to make that dream come true. Difficulties, yes. Mountains to climb, yes. Discouragements to face, yes. Democracy to make, yes. That is it, Nancy Lee. We still have in this world of ours democracy to make. You and I, Nancy Lee. But the premise and the base are here. The lines of the Declaration of Independence and the words of Lincoln are here and the stars in our flag. Those who deny you this scholarship do not know the meaning of those stars, but it's up to us to make them know. As a teacher in the public schools of this city, I myself will go before the school board and ask them to remove from our system the offer of any prizes or awards denied to any student because of race and color. Suddenly Ms. O'Shea stopped speaking her clear, clear blue eyes looked into those of the girl before her. The woman's eyes were full of strength and courage. Lift up your head, Nancy Lee, and smile at me. Miss O'Shea stood against the open window with the green lawn and the tulips beyond and the sunlight tangled in her gray hair, her voice an electric flow of strength to the hurt spirit of Nancy Lee. The abolitionists who believed in freedom when there was slavery must have been just like that. The first white teachers who went into the deep south to teach the freed slaves must have been just like that. All those who stand against ignorance and narrowness and hate and mud on the stars must be like that. Nancy Lee lifted her head and smiled. The bell for assembly rang. She went through the long hall filled with students toward the auditorium. There will be other awards, Nancy Lee thought. There's schools in other cities. This won't keep me down. But when I'm a woman, I'll fight to see that these things don't happen to other girls as this happened to me. And men and women like Miss O'Shea will help me. She took her seat among the seniors. The doors of the auditorium closed. As the principal came onto the platform, the students rose and turned their eyes to the flag on the stage. One hand went to the heart, the other hand outstretched toward the flag. 3,000 voices spoke. Among them was the voice of a dark girl whose cheeks were suddenly wet with tears. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That is the land we must make it, she thought.